of um, um, it's great to be in Elemorg, the, uh, the city of chairs, ah, Elemorg, the city of chairs, and um, it's great to be in Elemorg, the city of chairs and other types of furniture, uh, like uh, tables, great to be here in Elemorg, the city of chairs, yes, and, and tables and um, uh, applauses, uh, people uh, with jeans in Edinburgh. Uh, it's great to be here. Where people uh, wear jeans and uh, listen uh, to, to each other. I love Edinburgh, the city, uh, the city of gardens. It's great to be here uh, in Edinburgh, the city of gardens and ch chairs um, and people that have jeans on in the garden in Edinburgh. I love to be back in Edinburgh where people Dream about jeans and uh, sit in the garden on a chair in the morgue, if, at their, uh, outside of their house or apartment. There are different types of accommodation options in the morgue. <laughs> the city of um, people who have jobs and some people that don't have jobs in the morgue. The city of employment and unemployment. Just uh, different percentages of both of those things. Huh? It's so great to be here in Edinburgh, where um, people uh, sit in their apartment and uh, look at the garden. But if they are on the top floor, they can only look at it, not go and sit in it. In Edinburgh, so happy to be here, where people um, use uh, public transport to get from one place to another place. Wow, Edinburgh, I love being back here where People live uh, somewhere and then catch public transport to go to a different place. Could be a garden, could be an employment, or a, uh, another option, like a, a cafe. Ca to, uh, in Edinburgh, where people uh, eat f food and uh, uh, scones. In Edinburgh, eh? the city of the scones. The mysterious vanishing pastry. Where is this gone? <laughs> Great to be back in Edinburgh. Uh, seriously though, where, um, where people uh, live in apartments and use public transport to get to their jobs uh, and then come home again uh, via a garden and get home and sit in a chair and have a dream about their jeans. Thank you very much. <laughs> Inside the house lived Juan, who was a DJ. And next door to this house was another house. And inside that house lived Jose, who was a friend of Juan. By the way, both of these houses were in Nicaragua. 
Sometimes one would go over to Jose's house and they would smoke. And then they would dance. Jose would ask Juan to do crazy stuff. Like he would say, hey Juan, why don't we try and put one of my chickens back inside his egg? And Juan would say, no, I don't want to do that. Another time Jose said to Juan, hey Juan, why don't we invent a new type of glitter that's not just little bits of plastic, so that when hippies go to a forest rave, they don't scatter it all over Mother Earth. And Juan said, no. Just let it be ironic. But one time, one time Jose said to Juan, hey Juan, you need to come down to the hotel. There is a gringo here and he is playing house music. And Juan said, No way, Jose. I like Caribbean boys. Mr. Russ Eilig with his song Spring Garden on Fire. Winner of the 1986 Tune of the Crop for the annual Crop Over Festival in Barbados. Celebrating the end of the sugarcane harvest. The Caribbean. Where Juan DJs Calypso and Soca. Not the Shaman with their song Ebenezer Good. A cleverly disguised celebration of taking the drug ecstasy. <laughs> To number one in the UK charts. Coincidentally, during Drug Awareness Week. The Shaman from Aberdeen. 121 miles away from Edinburgh. The city, uh, uh, the city that, that is a uh, uh, two, two and a half hour drive from Aberdeen. But Juan did go down to the hotel with Jose. And he began to feel a confusion. He was from the Caribbean, but he liked this new kind of music. So he began to mix it together. Juan loved house music. Juan 
why? <laughs> this question we must first look at a chicken and find out from where comes the egg and to begin we need to go to a different a space a space a space a space, a space. A space. Mix, 
coming. <laughs> okay, just sit. <laughs> sit. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Lie down. of you who don't know what we are talking about. Uh, that means, uh, means, oh, what an ass you have. <laughs> Just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> it's okay to say? It's okay. It's a little bit male objectification. <laughs> Maybe it's your turn. <laughs> This also happened in the 69, eh? <laughs> Not male objectification. This song came out in 1969. O Calcutta, which is a language joke on the phrase O Calcutta. <laughs> In New York in the 60s, I could not say to Mick, what a nice ass you have, eh? It was illegal for two men to go on a date in New York in the 60s. It was illegal for a bar to sell a gay man a drink in New York in the 60s. But not in one place. Not at the Stonewall Inn. If you like to drink, and you like to dance, and you like music like this, mixed with other kinds of the best music at the time, mixed with guys with a cute ass, or women with a cute ass, for women, or not, depending on how you felt that night. It's fluid, no? Like tequila. Or lemonade, stop trying to put a label on it, just chill out. <laughs> but if you like stuff like this, then the Stonewall was the place for you. One night in 1969, undercover police made a raid on the Stonewall Inn. All of the lights were turned on. The doors were locked. And the music was hot. 200 people were trapped inside the bar. Female police officers took everyone who was dressed as a woman to the toilets to verify their sex. <laughs> Men who were dressed as a woman were usually arrested, but not this night. <laughs> this night, the men who were dressed as a woman refused to go. So the police picked on a woman who was dressed as a man, but she refused to go. She started to fight the police, and just before she was put into the police uh, ambulance, <laughs> she turned around and yelled at the crowd, her crowd, why don't you guys do something? And so they did something. Something erupted that night after years and years of being repressed. Angry, drunk, dry queens from the kick line, <laughs> high kicking the police back. <laughs> A mysterious gay superhero whipped out a parking meter and used it to bash in the door of the stone wall, freeing everyone from inside. The police were pelted with coins and deadly double entendres. 
the Jews were split. The Stonewall riots erupted. And within weeks, gay liberation groups sprang up across America and then the world. It was no longer illegal for two men to dance with each other. Beautiful. Okay, just a man, get up and dance. Just a man. That's okay. It doesn't matter, it's just dancing. Yeah. Okay, chill out, guys. <laughs> but make some noise for yourselves. Beautiful work. Right? We made a we made a pop-up dance floor, eh? Yeah. Edinburgh, the city of pop-ups. <laughs> and normal shops as well. <laughs> After Stonewall, clubs began to pop up all over New York City. Eh? Places like The Loft, the home of DJ David Mancuso, who turned his own apartment into a nightclub. Or The Continental, a gay bathhouse where two young black DJs, Larry Levan and Frankie Knuckles, played music for men who were so hot they only wore towels. <laughs> it didn't matter what you did in these clubs, you were safe. And it was in sanctuaries like these where disco was born. In these clubs you could get high, you could get loose, and you could get funky. And you could wear a lot of towels. <laughs> it soon became very fashionable. Huh? Even the straight guys wanted to hang out in the gay clubs. But it didn't matter what you were on the dance floor. Early disco DJs believed that if you could dance together, you could live together. And so they took pride in their dance floors. Carefully feeling the mood. <laughs> <laughs> and selecting songs that matched it. Good DJ. El enigma de tus labios descifrará. En belleza es el amante a modal. Bad DJ. machines to their equipment so they can add in whole new sections to a song like for example uh, percussion breaks Only the best bits of the song. Letting in another record with a similar tempo. Using a mixer. And incredible skill. of these early disco songs were usually female and they sang with gay abandon about their sexual desire. So now for the first time, female sexual desire was at the center of a musical culture. Female sexual desire 
surrounded by many excited, loved up gay men. <laughs> Just like the inside of a flower. <laughs> Flowers. Nature's genitals, eh? <laughs> Hundreds of quivering pollen-laden stamens in a happy circle around the central Donna Summer's shaped vagina pistol. <laughs> these sex bits of a plant. We pull these bits of a plant and sniff them. <sighs> we put them between our teeth when we want to become a Spanish stereotype. When our grandmother dies, we dig a hole in the ground, put her in it, and then cover her with genitals. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> but the flower is horny, huh? When the flower sees a bee, it spreads open its petals, squirts out some perfume, and makes itself all wet with nectar. And the bee is looking for the nectar. He fly out to the flower, spread open the petals, and start to lap at the nectar. <laughs> and this makes the flower feel nice, huh? Its stamens start to vibrate. The bee keeps lapping. The stamens vibrate until they explode. <laughs> Pollen all over the bee. <laughs> Over every part of him. <laughs> His face, everything. <laughs> this goes on for several minutes until the bee is finished with his flower. He flies out, bumping into everything. A little bit tiddly, sees another flower and thinks, Ooh, one more for the roll. <laughs> Love is in the air, everywhere I look around. Love is in the air, every sight and every sound. And I don't know if I'm being a fool. Don't know if I'm being a liar. But it's something that I must believe in. And it's there when I'm looking around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air Everywhere I look around Love is in the air What's the way you call out my name? <laughs> Love is in the air Love is in the air oh. Oblivious! going all day. The bee going from flower to flower to flower, getting more and more encrusted in the pollen of plants. It's like a slow bukake for the bee. Huh? <laughs> Finally, about five or six in the afternoon, he makes it back to the beehive, and there is his wife waiting for him, angry. Hola. <laughs> he is drunk and dripping in semen. <laughs> oh, you know, just now looking for work. Few leads, but look tomorrow. I'm gonna hit the shower. <laughs> On the way to the shower, he meets his friend Jose. He's also drunk. Hola, oh, Jose. How you? Throw up into the mouth of Jose. This is disgusting. Jose throw up into his mouth. 
they keep throwing up backwards and forwards into each other's mouths until what they are throwing up gets reduced down to a thick, sticky substance. Then they open up a hexagonal cupboard, put it in there to save for later. We come along, rip the roof of their house, stick our knives into their cupboard, and spread it on our top. Honey. I love towels. Toweling is the most absorbent and welcoming of all the fabrics. If you look closely at the towel, it's just hundreds of little loops, eh? Like this soft bit of Velcro. Velcro is yin and yang, toweling only yang. You can make so many things out of toweling. Towels, shorts, slippers. I love slippers. They're so slippery. You know there is only one letter difference between slippers and slippery? Why? Saturday Night Fever came out in 1977 and it changed the disco dance floor. From a place of togetherness and celebration, it made it a place where everyone stood around the outside of the dance floor watching a guy in a white suit, like a young Colonel Sanders, <laughs> strutting around trying to seduce a chicken. The disco had become annoying. Chicago, 1979. Kiss released this song. I was made for to be. Uh, I was made to have love to you, baby. Tonight, I wanna give it all to you. The singer Paul Stanley said that he wanted to write a good disco song. So much I well, Paul, it's good. <laughs> Another guy who thought it was good was a radio DJ in Chicago called Steve. But Steve hated disco. He felt it was threatening to take over. Coming into his city with its tight pants and shiny butt, threatening to take women away from honest beer-drinking rock fans. They needed more bands like KISS, real guys. So Steve made an event at the local White Sox baseball stadium called Disco Demolition. Fans could come along to watch the game and bring along a disco record that they would put onto a big pile. They were expecting about 2,000 people. 50,000 people turned up. And there, in the middle of a White Sox baseball game, Ten years after Stonewall, a whole lot of black records got exploded. Um. This is now officially the world's largest anti-disco rally. Disco search! Disco search! Disco search! Disco search! Disco search!
Disco had died. took him to Chicago. <laughs> that DJ's name was Frankie Knuckles. And he loved towels. around the corner from the White Sox Baseball Stadium. A new club had opened up in Chicago called the Water House. They were called the Water House. And it was there that Senor Knuckles went to play. To begin with the Water House, the uh, Water House was a members only club for mainly black gay guys. But just like with disco, this cool new clubbing sensation soon attracted all the straight kids. They got rid of the membership and adopted an open door policy. Anybody could get into the wa uh, warehouse as long as they had an open door policy. Senor Knuckles was mixing together New York disco with stuff like The Clash and Depeche Mode. Mixing in some rare soul, little bit of rock, some European synths, but most importantly, he plugged in a drum machine that kicked you relentlessly in the four fours. And this sound, this sound became known as the water house, uh, the wire house sound. <laughs> People started talking about it in the streets. Hey Chachi, you want any cool new water house record? <laughs> the word wire house became uh, too annoying for the Latinos in Chicago to say. <laughs> so they just showed him the down to house. And that is how it's got his name. A pretty much true story. From Chicago, house music spread out all over the world. to house eh? <laughs> but I think it has to do with music that sounds like this stay, stay. and producer more affectionately known as the most famous DJ on earth. But he is like a Monsanto, huh? He takes the seed of house and genetically fuck with it until he creates something horrible that makes people sick. It's called the Greta effect. I have an 
experiment about the Greta effect. I would like to play for you now. So here we have the Black Eyed Peas. Having a nice time. Chilling out with Macy Gray. Before David Guetta. And this is what happened to the Black Eyed Peas after David Guetta. I got a feeling. Understand? Maybe some of you are not convinced. Maybe some of you secretly like this song. I just put it on when I'm getting ready. Fair enough. Okay, so how about this guy then? With so much drama in the LBC, it's kind of hard being a Snoop Dogg to miss the Snoop Dogg. So now, so wait, keep coming up a funky ass yeah, shit like every single day. Having a nice time. Put a little of the cheese and make a few kids as I breeze through. Two in the morning and the party still jumping cause my mama ain't home. I got bitches in the living room. Here. He's got bitches in his living room. <laughs> and I'm not going to go home until 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Before David Guetta. <laughs> and this is what happened to a Snoop after David Guetta. It's Snoop Dogg. Can you be my doctor? Can you fix me up? Can you back me down? So I can lift you up, make you give it up, give it up, make you say So guys, I think the outcome of this experiment is just like how we should not hate all of Islam because of ISIS. Don't hate the music. is a very important city in the history of house music eh? but we're not there yet no 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 Edinburgh. we're still back in Where Frankie Knuckles was making people lose their minds with this new house sound. happening in these clubs that you would not believe, eh? Even if you saw them happening right now in front of you, you would not believe that they were actually happening.
Classic House. Luckily, in these clubs, there was a chill-out room you could go and chill out in when things got too full on. Just checking, is anyone called Mike in the house today? <laughs> Are there any, any Mikes in the crowd? I know we have a Mick. Mick is, is short for Mike. Michael. Michael, great, Mike. Okay, Mike. Yeah, just remember that your name is Mike. Okay, Mike? <laughs> so into the middle of this sexy madness in Chicago, a young DJ from Manchester called Mike turned up just to have a look around. Mike, can you please come? Before I, I carry on, and in this bit with the lemon, and I drink the juices, uh, usually I have some uh, seeds in the juice, and I spit them out on the climax. But uh, in Edinburgh, it's very hard to find lemons with seeds in them. <laughs> Fucking Monsanto, eh? <laughs> so you imagine that there are many little uh, metaphorical seeds lying all over the ground. Uh, carry on. <laughs> So Mike, just come and have a look around the house scene in Chicago for me. Yeah, so we got a small machine. Oh, there's a lot of seeds. Yeah, uh, maybe you can pick one of them up. Hold it carefully. Got it. Mike took the seed of house back from Chicago to Manchester, where he came from. So be careful. Don't give it to anyone else. You can give it to Ibiza in Berlin soon, but not yet, huh? <laughs> Mike was a head DJ at a club in Manchester called the Hacienda. <laughs> and it was there that he introduced this new house sound. Margaret Thatcher was trying her hardest to make sure that everyone was having as bad a time as possible. <laughs> Nowhere did she do a better job of this than in Manchester. <laughs> Los Manchesterians were unemployed and frustrated. So they spent a lot of time at the Hacienda. And just like with disco, all sorts of random people became friends on the dance floor. Thanks to this cool new sound, the open door policy of the club, and a very special kind of disco biscuit. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hola, como esta usted? Very well, thank you. Muy bien, gracias. And you? You still? Perfectly well, thank you. <laughs> Perfectamente bien, gracias. This is my wife. Esta es mi esposa. I would like to introduce my friend, Mr. Smith. 
Quiero presentarle a mi amigo, el señor Smith. This is my husband. Este es mi esposo. Is this your daughter? Es esta su hija? This is my son. Este es mi hijo. Good morning. Buenos días. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Good night. Buenas noches. See you tomorrow. Hasta mañana. See you later. Hasta luego. Goodbye. Adiós. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. The final ingredient in the evolution of house. People were making new friends. Instead of getting drunk and fighting, people were making cups of tea and eating hobnobs in a stranger's lounge at six in the morning. Having a smoke. While some guy from Venezuela tried on all their towels. <laughs> By 1987, ecstasy had taken over the clubs and house music spread out from Manchester, making its way to London. Illegal raves sprang up like daisies along the side of the M25. <coughs> Raiders would sneak into the farms at night Eh, ¿dónde está mi amigo? Eh, Mick, can you put your torch 
on, anyone who has a torch on their phone, please put put it on now, huh? It was hard to find his fiestas, but if you listen closely, you could hear the sound of the bass traveling over the hill. House music that spread out of the clubs into nature, surrounded by bees and flowers and pollen and fireflies. There were no longer any bounces, only cows. Black, white, Asian, Frisian, Jersey belted, gay, trans, straight, wagyu, dairy, upper class, lower class, it didn't matter. Everyone was there for the same reason, to find the fiesta. 1989 was declared the second summer of love. So powerful was the message of unity that house music brought with it. All the men, stand up and dance. And now everybody else, the ladies, the cows, the chairs, the bees, the pollen, everything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a smile on your face, it may be on your body, it may be on your face or hand or anything. You are welcome in this club. And if you want to dance, you are welcome too. Gracias, gracias, gracias. of five pounds. I only have four of them, so jump in quick. <laughs> Thank you, my last show. Gracias, Edemurro. Gracias, Edemurro. 